Great to have you back on The Breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa. Our first major conversation uh, today, of course, is going to be talking about uh, um, well, opening up an investigative report that was uh, carried out by uh, the BBC sometime last week, or was put out by the BBC sometime last week, and it's about cultism in the Nigerian society and, of course, the links it has with uh, politics. This morning, we're speaking with a chief uh, lecturer at the Nigerian Institute of Journalism, uh, Jide Johnson. Thank you very much for joining us. Good morning to you, sir. Good morning. Good morning to you, sir, and mercy. And um, since we are in the season of mercy, mm -hmm. God have mercy on all of us. And Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to all our viewers all over the world in advance. Same Merry to Christmas. you, sir. Now let's talk about um, you know the the main uh, you know conversation here. Uh, cultism politics um, for a lot of people didn't come as a shock. You know when that. Um, uh, investigative report, you know, was put out. Uh, for some, you know, it might have been a little surprising. But l let's hear from you first. Uh, did you always, you know, know that there is a link with these two in Nigeria? It has always been a link between the two. However, we thought courtism was dominant in campuses. And we saw um, the advent of the Fourth Republic which was a major feature that bedeviled this Fourth Republic at exception. You recall that it was a national problem that the then president, um, who has not spent up to two years in, in office, President Lucia Gombas, in 2000, directed all vice chancellors and head of tertiary institutions to come up with a, with a policy and a program that would eradicate courtism. In our campuses within three months, that was as far back as 2000. And um, um, you could see that there has always been, been a linkage between um, politics and politics. Uh, it didn't come into the open until about that time when we saw that uh, the president directed, we have always associated um, Togri, Togri with, with, um, with, with, with politics in our part of the world. But we discover and we found a linkage between courtism and politics at the bed and twilight of this fourth republic. So it's nothing, it's nothing surprising, it's not nothing new. Um, the BBC uh, documentary just highlighted what has been in existence and what people have written about, what people have said about but the challenge we have in our part of what is that. Uh, we don't value our own internal inquiry, our own internal investigation until an external body does that. And it's, it's very, very human in nature. If you put the love right in your house, you might not appreciate it. But when you go out to the eatery and you see the love rice and then you be funny over the love rice, the love rice which basically you cook in your own house every other time. Yeah, but, but um, um, Mr. Johnson, why exactly is this... Um um, a problem, you know, from, from what you've seen, what exactly did you see in the documentary that uh, you may have spotted and said, okay, this is a major challenge in the country? Or is this, you know, for, for, for Nigerians, should this be a, you know, a normal thing, you know, nothing to worry about? It shouldn't, it shouldn't be the norm. Where you use, um, it shouldn't be the norm. Where you have non-state actors influencing the democratic process. That's the challenge for me where you have non-state actors having control over the will of the people and having access to public funds and the use of state resources to perpetrate evil in the society. That's, that's, that's the concern for me. For democracy to really thrive, it should be the will of the majority, not the manipulation perpetrated through the use of violence, threats, intimidation and assassination with non-state actors such as um, different types of courtist groups that we have across board. And we thought that this menace was a menace on our campuses until we discovered that it has getting to the street. There's virtually no street in Nigeria that you won't find one court. It has, it has got into secondary school. It has got into primary school. It has got in, you, if you link this story with the story of Doen, um, the one case, the BBC story with the one case, and what was the major trust of the the one case, you discover that it's, it, it's, it's a menace that is going to be to a site. 
I'll tell you, there was an incident that happened, I think, about um, two two weeks ago, around when a truck crushed, crossed some school student um, in 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 Ojodubega in Lagos. I was I was uh, when that I was after the incident, I was unfortunate to find myself in that in that in that particular area when the driver was brought in the, the and you need to see the secondary school student when this secondary school student went on rampage you need to see the venom you need to hear what is coming out of their mouth and you need to see how the the, the i was just praying because i left my car i i left my car came out of the car parked the car because i was just three meters away from the police station parked my car and um, took care of my life. My life was much more important than my car. And I was praying that God, may God not set it in the heart to start certain things at place. So it is in virtual every, every nooks and cranny of our side. And it is because the political class have aided and abetted the growth of, of this courtism. There's no doubt. There's no doubt about that. All you need to do is for you to just go on monitoring, doing political parties primaries, doing political party primaries, or you go through it during the day, the day of the election, and you will see how these various elements, elements that are not state elements, security agencies, that have all arms and ammunition that even some state security cannot, cannot, cannot boast of, then you begin to wonder, why are these people not arrested? Or why are they not intercepted? Why are they not prosecuted by state actors if, quote unquote, they don't have political political god god godfathers? And that's the death street which we have found. We have found our ourselves, and there are many factors that are responsible that are responsible for this. Mm. Okay, but let's also, you know, um, stay with the educational sector. Now, we know that prior to this time, you know, cultism and cult-related activities were very common, you know, in the universities uh, across the country. But how did we get to the point that we now have them in our primary schools and our nursery schools and our, you know, all the secondary schools? How did we get to that point? Um, do we also have, because I mean, it's been really tied down to the fact that yes, there's a connection with, you know, politicians and, you know, uh, cultism and court related activities. But in our schools, in our institution, as fragile as this is, because we have this young, uh, you know, children here, how did we get to that point? How did it, you know, get into our institution at that level? Planning is both in character and intellect. Learning also has to do with the totality of your well-being and full development. I'll tell you this. Um, what we are focused on is on the mental side. We have not focused on, on the physical side of learning. We have not focused on, on the moral side of learning. How many schools, you recall in the past, how many schools have um, sporting facilities? In education, we have co-curricular activities that goes with education. That where people can burn their unbridled energy, where people can, if someone loves violence, you could channel that resources for that person to go into combat sport, combat sports like wrestling, like boxing, like kickboxing. What facility? If you check other climbs, they have this student from from Credo begins to know how to channel beyond um, beyond education. There are co-curricular activities that. We engage in how many schools have sporting facilities? I'm throwing it to you. Both at the primary, at the secondary, and the tertiary institution. Is that how we used to be in the past? These are things that we need. The school system that we have now, you send the children to go to school, they go to school, they do they do the mental side, they do assignment, they do, and all the spare time they have, what do you have them to do? You don't have them to do anything, they are not engaged morally. They are not engaged um, physically. Now, there's one thing which sport teaches you. For example, you know, if you play football, you must know how to control your anger. If someone should give you a sliding tackle, you can't slap that person. If you slap that person, you'll be given a red card. That disciplines you to control your emotion. All of that, we don't have it again. And nobody's. You go to our, our university system, there are no sporting facilities. 
there are no avenue for students to even engage in sports. It's gone. It's 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 it's, it's gone. It's your now. Why do you think that the collegiate system in America and in other part of the climb they have sporting games for university students across the length and breadth of the world? Like we used to have Nuga games, like we used to have all secondary school games. So if we really want to deal with this issue, we must go back to the basics. What were the things that we are doing in the 60s? What were the things that we are doing in the 70s that we are no longer doing again? Now, the schools that we have, the, 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 play, the, the sporting facilities have either been hijacked by government and turned into private estates, or they built other schools, rather than look for, they built other schools on the sporting facilities of those schools. And now the cheap the, the pupils and the students don't have an avenue for them to enter themselves. Another factor is we have destroyed legitimate means of student organization. What do I mean by that? Student unionism. You have destroyed student unionism. You have not provided across the board. And it's unfortunate that most VCs, most people in power today, even in Senate, in the House of Rep, who are one student union leaders, who are one student if, if If you go to school abroad, you go to school in Western world, you are encouraged to join one form of fraternity or the other. Wherever you could, you could advance a particular course. Now, schools have proscribed student unionism. So, there is no avenue for students to have representation. There is no avenue for students to have a say in how they are being governed in their school. As a result of that, they will go underground. They will go underground to find another means of protecting themselves, of preserving themselves, of finding some measure of responsibility. And I've said it, this democracy cannot grow, our society cannot grow, until we allow student unionism to grow. You allow it to grow, you allow it, but you, the next thing you see is, you, you proscribe it. I'm not taking any squat of it. Even my own school, my own school, that is a school of journalism. Are you getting my why should we be afraid of students coming together and forming an association and forming an alternative point of view to existing order to serve as checks and balances within any given system? We don't have it again. We don't go across and willingly VCs and government councils of tertiary institutions we pride themselves that we have proscribed student unionism. And that's is why we have found ourselves where we are we are today. The reason why it became a hydra headed problem in this in the late in the late 90s was as a result of military government, successive military government from Babangida era proscribing student unionism, arresting and jailing student union leaders. You need those institutions, those are basic institutions that allow people to grow, that allow people to form their opinion, to form their ideological leaning, and for them to learn and test leadership. We don't have that again. We don't have literary and debating society in schools again. Schools used to engage in literary and debating society contests. We don't have principal cops again. All of these activities, and then we start complaining, you know, what's happening? No, we are the cause of the problem because some of the things that we need to engage the youth they have unbridled energy. We don't use it to engage them. Some of the things that we need to use to teach them leadership, to teach them responsibility, to get them engaged, to form their opinion, to know that they have a voice in the society. We have stifled it. And when you push people on the ground, they will engage in nefarious activities. And that's and that's and that's the bane and that's the bane of, 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 of our society. I remember, you know, very well, you know, how popular Nuga games used to be in the 90s. Um, but, yeah. you know, today it, it almost my younger doesn't sister, exist. My younger sister won two good medals for Unila. Two good medals in basketball and in handball for Unila. In Nuga games. So, we don't, so we don't have, even in secondary school, we don't have all of that again. You yeah, said the they, children... There used to be inter-house inter uh, sports. sports in the... Uh, inter-house in sports that you invite other schools and... They don't even have those sporting facilities again. What are, for example, Bazarugi and Messi? You know, once once a child goes to school, primary, secondary, and he goes to college, if he cannot get admission through his mental ability, he could get admission through his physical ability. By the natural talent he has, 
probably in one sporting activity or the other. We recruit leadership in society, in society, through, through, through those means. You know, the only way we tell people to success in Nigeria is for you to be mentally, to be mentally sound. And that's not how society grows. And that's not how we develop this society, society in the past. I remember one song of Mr. Obi sang in, this, in the 70s, that you do not bury your talent. If your talent is to sing, let the child sing. If the talent of your child is to play football, let him play football. He might turn to Arnold Larry Cat tomorrow. If you, so uh, there are various means which people could succeed. Just imagine if there was no boxing in America. You will hear of someone like me with that. Will you hear of someone like Mike Tyson? We have someone like Tyson Fury in Great Britain, or there's no basketball. Would there be LeBron James? Would there be Kevin Durant? Would there be we or without without athletics? Would there be someone like um, um, Usain Bolt? Of course not. And we keep government keep paying lip service to it. I, I, I ask you, don't send your reporter. One of your producers should send your reporters to go to secondary schools in Lagos State and look at the schools and look at whether there are sporting facilities in the school. Even private schools, we are sending our children to prison. That's what we are sending them to. They come in in the morning, we give them, they will, they will, they will, they will do mental work, we give them assignment, assignment. Have, have you attempted to do the assignment of a two-year-old, a three-year-old, of those school, school children? Have you attempted to do the assignment? Just look for one of your cousins. I let them bring the assignment for you. The assignment will take hours. So emphasis is on, is on intellectual development. It's not on mental development. It's not on physical development. It's not on moral development. And we'll be blaming, we'll be blaming um, secret court. The political oh. class know what they are doing. This yeah, is what they use to perpetuate themselves. Ah, yeah. They foment violence, and they use that violence to foment themselves. All you need to do is to go when they are doing primaries. We'll soon get to the season. I can talk broadly about this because I was involved in politics for 20 years, 1987 to 2007. I was actively involved. I've sought elected office. I've, I've held party offices. So I know I know what's what 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 what, yeah. what is it? Judith Johnson, what is involved. This is um is there any way to differentiate this from the Nigerian politicians, you know, taking advantage of uh, poverty and and uh, and uh, thuggery in the society, uh, because you know we're talking courtism now. Um, I'm sure that, of course, there's different court groups, um, you know, across, of course, uh, each and every state. And so, is this, you know, really just the politicians taking advantage of the availability? of thugs and unemployed you know individuals in society to you know help no, them no, keep no. help keep themselves in power or is this you know targeted directly at courtism itself no you see it's, it's you know power power is sweet and the and and the spoils of power is very very sweet do you know that some members of state cabinet are members of courtes yes courtes group some members of in actual sense there was a particular government in one of the southwestern states for you to be a member you must join a part you must be a member of a particular and um, courtish groups for you to be a member of of, of, of that that's how bad it has gotten into that people don't even hide it and as a result of that they promote all of this in in the society and they promote this in 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 schools now if you look at what was the reason behind the establishment of courtes, um, confraternities, um, this type of groups? It is not to foment trouble. It is not to foment violence. It is not to engage in 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 assassinating rival rival groups. This was meant to be to provide protection, a sense of responsibility. An identification for 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 people in the university in the university systems. Once you go to school abroad, there all these confraternities are open. They are well known, and then you decide which one you want to join based on the values, based on the philosophy, based on the ideas which they stand for. If you take the basis, the idea behind some of these courtes group when they were established and what they are doing now. We see that there is a departure. Well, let's talk about 
Pride Confraternity, which was established by Professor Wally Shoenka in the University of Ibadan and some of his friends. I, what was the goal? The goal was to protect students from harassment, from intimidation, to fight a common cause of protection. But what has it turned into in the society? In the society now. So this this these are the the, the challenges that we have because the goal of these groups when they were established is not what it is being used to pursue. And we have said it. If schools should allow if people want to form fraternities in schools, let them come in the open. Let them register. Know what the fraternity is all about. It is because you have made them secret. That's why they have become nefarious in their activity and they can be used for clandestine activities. Let them if you go to school abroad, you have different types of groups, different types of confraternity you can join. And then, for example, you know that the first six president of the United States of America were Freemasons. You are free, you are Freemasons. Now, Freemason is a, is, 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 is a confraternity group in the United States of America. It's what, all of these schools we talk about, Harvard, Oxford, they have different types of confraternity. For you to join, it's open. But for you to join, you must live by some certain ideas. You must be ready to contribute to the growth of the society, not to destroy others, not to kill others. And that's what we have in our own part, in our own part of the world, that people will now use it to perpetuate themselves in power. Because they know if they allow the will of the people, if they allow people to freely and peacefully go to the poll, they will not win the election. So how do they do that? In order to perpetuate they made the tyrannical rule of the minority. So they will use scare tactics, intimidation, harassment, assassination, violence. You need to ask yourself, we need to ask, why do we have violence perpetuating our electoral process, both at the primaries and at the main election? If indeed these people are willing to serve people, at least I should be, we see the way they do elections in other climate. Election is like carnival. And we used to have election like that in Nigeria. It used to be like carnival. How did we get to where we are now? If not that the political class had a hand in it. And like BBC has reported, and um, like Nigerian media have reported, have you seen any electoral officer, electoral, electoral offender? How many have been jailed? How many have been prosecuted? How many of the political class have been have been arrested and prosecuted for promoting and perpetuating violence during elections since 1999? I'm asking you, since 1999, how many? The last election, we saw the result was declared, and the person that declared the result said that he declared the result under duress, that a gun was pointed to his head. We saw how a serving minister was running for an election in a particular state and how violence was perpetuated in that in that state. The only person that was there, I knew he was a was a professor of a uh, school in Imo State or there about a professor or whether in this in Imo State or Aquaibon State, that professor that was there. That was the only person. But what are those that are connected to it? Mm. But you never you never see any one of the political class being called to being called to order, being called to question when it comes to perpetuating this violence. If you go on the street, you know, and then it's, it's, it's virtually on the street and it's virtually on one of the things areas they go to control. They control the road transport workers. They control the road transport workers who allow autism to grow on the street and then for you to become a unit leader, for you to become a, a union leader, you know all the mess, you know what you need to do to become that. And that's how we have found ourselves. All right, but J.J. Jackson, uh, um, let's also look at this now. Uh, I mean, religion is such a big thing for us in Nigeria. And you, we know that predominantly you have Christians and Muslims. Let's take, for example, now, in 2019, according to the statistics uh, that's been put out there, 16,300 
churches that we have as of 2019 and now we're in 2020 so you can imagine uh, you know the number that would have actually been added to that with 3.6 million members I mean of ch church persons uh, my question is where how come you know religion has not trickled down you know, church, Muslim, because the tenets, if you look at it, whether it's, you know, Christianity or whether it's uh, Islam, uh, you find out that the tenets are almost the same. Love is one of it. And so how come that has not trickled down to, uh, you know, the society and to reduce, you know, the activities of the secret courts in Nigeria? Instead of culture is very powerful, that culture shifts structure. We have a culture whereby the church, the, the religious institutions and traditional institutions have become embedded in the Nigerian political culture. We don't teach moral instructions again. Churches don't preach moral. It's about how to succeed. All those um, when religious institutions have become materialistic themselves, um, the principle of referialism is not being taught. Um, where there is this rat race among churches, particularly I can speak more about churches because I'm a Christian. Um, the rat race are biggest auditorium than own, than our own auditorium, our auditorium. We have this. Don't forget our churches too are, 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 are caught in the various denominations are various courts. There's let and various sects in Islamic faith are various courts too. So let's just face the reality. It's, it's, it's just that, that it's an open courtism. You know, I'm a member. The way the way membership of these various denominations interface and interact differ. So we have a situation whereby the moral authority of the traditional institutions, the traditional rulers, and the religious leaders have have, have, have been eroded by the culture that we have in our society. So how many churches are teaching moral instructions? How many churches are even practicing the tenets of their faith? Now, if you practice the tenets of the faith, you should be able to call those in leadership to order. But you see that the political class, they will call the our so-called religious leaders, they will call them to come for Thanksgiving. They invite them to their special programs. And they will, they will heal and abet this, this level of impunity. If our religious leaders are really religious leaders, they will call to question the spirit of insecurity that we have in Nigeria. They will call to question the, the performances of the governors, the elected representative of the people. Or what do they do? They go cap in hand to Asura. They go cap in hand to, to, to Lagos House. They will go and sit down there. I've, I've asked this question and I'm saying it. Can you imagine Jesus going to do Thanksgiving? in the house of a governor a, or in the state house. I'm just I'm just training to people. So basically those institutions they've they've lost their value because the culture that we have in this country has rubbed on their structure. And as a result of that, those basic principles, remember the son of whom you are, understand that uh, uh, this world is not you are not meant to be materialistic, but in church you can only pack your car in the main car park, if you drive the most beautiful car, they will look at your car before they allow you to park. I'm not talking heresy. I'm talking about what I know. And I'm talking about what I've experienced. I've had cause to challenge people in church. And then um, um, I've had cause to challenge them. And then, you know, when you begin to ask questions, they call you the son of the devil or a troublemaker or human rights activist. So basically, our church has become materialistic. We have caught up with the culture of materialism. So both the traditional institutions and the religious institutions. As a result, they are not they are not bold enough to you can't talk while you are eating. Because they are they are eating part of the cookie jar. Because they are eating part of the cookie jar. So they can't talk to, to the people they are eating from. So that's that's oh. that's I don't imagine we, we don't have the we don't have current president like Sunday in bank, like Archbishop Adeti Louis. You know like we used to have in the past. We I have said it, under military regime, our society seems to be more organized and more proactive and holding government accountable than we have ever witnessed under... Someone asked me this question. 
In fact, we were, we were riding on Todd Milan Bridge. And the person asked me this question. You think that um, military administration has been better for Nigeria than civilian I said, if they are not experienced 20 years of civilian administration, I will have a contrary view. I said, however, with the benefit of insight, I think I want to agree that Nigeria has been better off under military administration than we have been better off under civil administration. The third mainland bridge was conceived. Third mainland bridge was conceived by military administration. The third mainland bridge. We have used 21, um, 20, 20, 21 years of, now 22 years of democratic experience. There's no fourth mainland bridge. There's no plan to extend, to, to, to diversify labels, to do anything concerning that. So, but... All right, Julie Johnson. But I'm not saying that we should have military government, but I'm just saying that with the benefit of insight, and the only I did public administration as a as an elective course in the Department of Post Science while I was doing my undergraduate degree in Yinlad. He said the only way you can make science or public administration is to do a comparative analysis. Now what I'm doing is a comparative analysis. If you do a comparative analysis of military administration, these are the civilian administration in Nigeria. You ask yourself our questions. Is media as active as it used to be under military administration? Are the civil society as active as they used to be under military administration? Are religious body active as they used to be? So as a researcher, right. you to Johnson, use that uh, as... Uh, would, uh, yeah, I'm with you, I'm sorry. Yeah, I think we, we can you know, end um, the, the conversation at this point. Um, obviously, there's a lot of work that needs to be done. You know, it's not a, it's not a very, you know, beautiful picture that has, has been painted of the Nigerian society with regards to courtism and politics. Uh, but of course, uh, we parents, will continue parents to have... have a role to play in this. Parents yes, have a role. Absolutely. Parents, yes, the role of parenting, everything that we see in the society starts from the home. So all of us should take responsibility as a parent. Absolutely. I think it starts from the home. The wow. bottom line is parenting. We have lost that value of parenting. And we used to have collective parenting. A child does not belong to the father alone. It belongs to the community. The community takes responsibility for training the child. We have lost that value. And I think we need to go back to that value. Where you have community parenting. If your father's friend should see you misgiving, your father's friend will discipline you right away from there. Thank you, Osaro. Julia Johnson, thank you so much for your time this morning. And we, of course, uh, wish you a very interesting day ahead. Stay with us. Uh, we'll take a short break. When we come back, we're moving into talking about Nigeria's electoral process. The INEC chairman says we need 305 billion naira to conduct the 2023 general elections. And that uh, comes up right after the short break.